let's check in on what those market movements uh, have delivered, uh, particularly overnight. And uh, well, it's all about what's going on at a macro level at the moment, particularly with those Treasury yields. Lachlan Meekin joining us now from Go Markets. Lachlan, very good to catch up with you. As I said, I all about that route in uh, bond markets at the moment and the flow and effects that's having across all markets. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I mean, uh, the FX market especially is is, abs- is just being driven by this um, this rise in yields, the US 10-year yields especially. Um, you can see that across all the pairs. They're, they're basically tracking the rate differentials of, of their underlying bonds. So um, Aussie, Aussie dollar is a very good example. If you have a look at the Aussie 10 minus the US 10-year yield, that it's been tracking it tick for tick with the Aussie dollar. So the last few months. So it is a big story. Um, how far they can go, how high for how long is, is really going to be the, the, the big driver of the FX market that looks like for, for certainly for the near future. What are you going to be watching out for then, Lonkin, that may well determine uh, those, the movement of those currencies um, if perhaps, you know, we, are we seeing a peak in those, in those Treasury yields? Uh, a lot of this also depending on what's coming out of the States at the moment with um, the focus this week being very much on the jobs market. Yeah, I mean, I, you'd be pretty brave, I think, to call a top just yet. Um, it's We saw a kind of a relief dip in yields last night on that ADP miss, but the ADP figures, its last three months has been a very poor indicator of, of non-farm. So non-farm on Friday, definitely a big one. Um, and also CPI next week out of the US, a couple of big figures in the next week. But um, yeah, to say the top's in now, I think you'd be pretty brave that the uptrend's uh, pretty resilient by the looks of it. So a um, little little dip last night. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more, uh, a little bit of a bounce there. And we'll see we'll see how the data plays out in the next week, whether that's sustained or not, or where we kind of top out here for for a little while anyway. So with along with those bond yields, we've seen the US dollar maintain its strength as well. Yeah, well, that's just tracked. It's just tracked those yields up. Um, the dollar index is just on a tear. Uh, it, it did see it dip below 107 last night, but it has a very, very strong uptrend. Um, there's very good support around that 106 to 106 and a half. I don't think there'll be um, a, a, a real move down from here. I think it's more of a, a, a retracement from oversold levels. I wouldn't be surprised to see it kind of track towards that 108 uh, if yields stay this high. Um, from there, we'll see. It's 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 going it, to. We'll see where the ten year yield is at that time. What the data looks like, but um, the uptrend's in place, and I'm not going to call a top on the dollar or yields just yet. Okay, well, it's just all very volatile at the moment, isn't it? And yeah, we're seeing that on the equity markets, particularly with the VIX at uh, extreme fear is back, which I guess is good for traders. Um, where else are you looking at the moment, Lachlan? Of course, the yen making news of late uh, with speculation perhaps the, the BOJ may be poised to intervene. Yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be the one I'm watching, Andrew. It's, it's, it's exciting when you get this, um, the, the market fighting against a central bank like this. And that 150 level, um, watching it for the last week, it, you could see that the, almost like there was a cap there. Like the traders just weren't brave enough to go through. And then when they popped their head through, Bang, we saw that um, big drop. Now, uh, it doesn't look like it was a direct intervention from the Ministry of Finance, from judging from early um, figures, but certainly something happened, whether it was a rate check or um, some trades due to to strike price on options at that level. I don't know. But going back to previous times when we've had this jawboning from the Japanese, when, when the yen's been either too weak or, or, or too strong, um, you do see these these big moves down, then the market always retraces. The traders always like to play chicken with the Bank of Japan, it seems. And um, I think we'll see it kind of slowly trickle back up to that 150 to test them again. Um, but you'd be brave to stay above. But it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting to watch in the next couple of weeks, see how that goes, That definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lachlan, we, um, of course, talking about what's happening with the Aussie, we did have the RBNZ um, following the RBA leaving rates uh, on hold that was that's what expected but you know similarly to the Aussie dollar I guess that uh, the Kiwi dollar remaining under pressure at the same time yeah they both have very similar drivers uh, they're both very uh, you know um, sensitive to risk which is uh, with the, you know equity markets the risk sentiment's been quite sour lately so they've both struggled in that respect um, against each other the Kiwi dollar did has outperformed the last week or so especially after the RBA I think the RBA maybe may have disappointed the bulls somewhat 
um, a little bit. It was just more of the same. There was nothing. Uh, the new governor hasn't really didn't seem to stamp her, um, you know, inflation fighting uh, credentials on it at all. Um, but the RBNZ even uh, disappointed the bulls even more yesterday by the looks of it because the, that Aussie Aussie Kiwi cross dropped on Tuesday and really retraced yesterday. So they seem to be even more cautious than the RBA. Um, that's an interesting pair to watch. I, I like trading the Aussie Kiwi. I think anything under anything with a 106 handle or lower is, is probably a good buy on that. Um, that 107 level I like to see as the midpoint, which is where we are about now. Um, Yes, so that's that's certainly one I'm watching as well. Aussie Kiwi, any dips down below that 107, um, very normally a good buy for the Aussie, but uh, yeah, we'll see if this happens again.